Yeah. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I just really felt like it had been a long time since I did a video, which it was it hasn't really been that long, but I guess I just missed y'all. So if y'all hear any noises in the background, that's my roommate. Hi. Fawn says hi y'all. She's getting ready to go home and leave me here all alone. We just got back from the Wendy Williams show, y'all. It was so much fun. How you doing? How you doing? <laughs> okay, so what I'm going to do is a question and answer video. So I'm going to scroll down. I have my iPad where I'm looking at all my comments on YouTube and see if I see any good questions to answer for you all. Um, today is October the 3rd, so that means an airline that's very near and dear to my heart opened up their applications recently, and I hope you all have applied, because I'm sure they will be closing it very so soon. So, first well. question, and these are just going to be kind of random questions about any and everything just that I see. So, this first question says, um, does training require a lot of math skills? No, I would say no. I don't remember. Did, did we do any math in training? No. no. According to my old flight attendant roommate, she's been flying for quite a few years and she says flight attendants can't do math. So, no, training does not really require much of any math. We, did, we didn't do any math at all. No. Training is mostly memorization. Yeah, so for training, just be prepared to get your brain in the mode to memorize a ton of stuff very quickly and test on it. some of the nicest comments, like, and sometimes I'm a little slow on responding, but I do respond. Um, Latrice C said, I've been watching your videos on and off during the weekend, and all I can say is thank you so much. You're so welcome. Thank you for the insight. I'm really enjoying your video. Say a prayer for me. I'm praying for you, Latrice. Fawn is praying for you, too. She just did. I need seniority, Latrice. We need seniority. Long Beach is super senior base. So this is going to be a question regarding my specific airline. Y'all know I'm not going to say it, but y'all know who I work for. And yes, Long Beach is a super senior base at this airline. Some airlines you go to and you're going to be on reserve for a very long time. Like, for the longest time, y'all, I wanted to work for United Airlines only and solely so I could be based at IAH in Houston, Texas, so I wouldn't have to leave home. And the seniority there is insanely crazy, and people are on reserve for like 10, 15 years, no joke. So, Long Beach is going to be our most senior base. And I think people right now are sitting on reserve for about seven years at Long Beach. So it is possible to get into Long Beach, but it is going to take you a few chances of putting in a bid to transfer to Long Beach. And then once you get there, you need to be prepared to sit reserve forever. So if that's where you live and you don't mind it and you're still able to live your life, then that's great. But if you don't live there and you're just wanting to go there just because, but you're going to be sitting reserve, more prayers to you. I couldn't do it. I can barely do it here in New York. I binge watched all your videos all day and I just applied to your airline. And I, what else does this say? Hush up, Alexia. <laughs> um, and I really hope I get in. Thank you so much for all your help. Brit Bite says. You're so welcome, Brit. And I really hope you get in too. If you have any questions, send me a DM or an email. I'll be happy to answer. Okay, okay. next question. Somebody asked, do you get paid for the hours you're at the airport on reserve or get a per diem at least? So there's two different type of reserves that we have. So when we get our schedule, it's just going to say reserve, 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 reserve at the beginning of the month, right? And then when that block actually starts or that week actually starts, then it changes it to SCR, which stands for short call reserve, which means you sit at home on reserve, or it's going to say ASB, which is airport standby, which obviously means you go to the airport and sit reserve. 
So when you're short call reserve, you're not actually getting any hours towards your guarantee. Um, so I guess I can say no, you're not getting per diem or any hours. But when you're sitting airport standby, um, which is a six hour period, you do get a few hours towards your guarantee. Or if you actually get used, then you get the higher of the two, which is always going to be being used is going to be more than what they pay you for airport standby. Okay, so another question is, hello, thanks for everything that you're sharing with us. My question is, what do you all do as students for income while you're in training? Meaning bills that you still have at home with no income. Well, the answer to that question is really going to be whatever you personally do with your money is what you do with your money. Um, what I did is I saved money before I went to training. I mean, if you are on any forums on Facebook or any type of chats or groups, or if you watch multiple YouTubers, flight attendant YouTubers, they're going to tell you to save your money, and they're telling you that specifically because... Most airlines during training do not pay you. I was blessed that my airline paid us a little penny here and there. Um, and a few other airlines. I know Delta pays during training. Um, who else pays during training? Just Virgin? As far as majors or major? Just, no, just, I don't know. But anyways, it's, it's really hit or miss, truthfully, like... Most of those main lines don't pay you during training other than Delta. Maybe American Delta. doesn't. United does not. Mm -hmm. So, um, I would just say if you're really good with your money, go ahead and save a lot of it. If you're not that great with your money, try to cut back on as many bills as possible. Because at the end of the day, <clears throat> you're still not guaranteed a job while you're in training. Remember, it's a conditional job offer, so you haven't actually been given a job yet. Like, this is still part of the interview process. You still have to pass this portion to actually earn your wings and get hired on with the company. So, um, just do what you can. I mean, find a way to still pay your bills, cut back on your bills. I know quite a few of my classmates, they sold their cars or whatever they had to do to cut back on bills, get rid of Hulu, Netflix, all those small things that add up. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't really know what to specifically say, but just figure out what you can afford on whatever budget that you have and go, go with that. But training is usually anywhere from, I think Southwest is what, three weeks to Delta like eight weeks. Mm -hmm. So anywhere from a month to two months if you're a U.S. based airline. If you're outside the U.S., then, you know, y'all are in training for like three, four crazy months. So I don't really know how those airlines work as much. But just make sure you save and you cut back on your bill for you. Do you have a Facebook fan page or an Instagram? Yeah, you should start a Facebook page. I'm a fan. <laughs> I do have a Facebook page that's actually a, a business page, but I haven't done much with it yet. Um, but I do have an Instagram. I'll put it down here below. It's alexianicole.life on Instagram. I'm kind of thinking about giving y'all my Snapchat, but that's really the only social form that I have that's still just all to myself. So I'm still being really selfish with that one. Sorry, Sorry. about pronouncing your name wrong. Raymond and Bo Boba said, love this video. I graduate from training October 4th, which is tomorrow. So congratulations. Yay. New subby. Butterfly Faith 25 says, I'm a new subby. Thank you for subscribing. I have a short cut natural hair and I have my face to face coming up and you've totally inspired me. Great video. Aw, thank you. Me and my, my roomie actually just shaved off all her hair because she's psycho. <laughs> <laughs> so the short hair is probably the easiest thing to do in the airline industry. I mean, everybody might not be cute with it. Luckily, we are. Um, but trust me, when they call you at 3 a.m. to go to the airport in two hours, you don't want to have, you don't even got time to do your hair. So, I know. Wow, you have to be a special kind of person to live a flight attendant lifestyle. Yes. Absolutely, you do. <laughs> Some people would say we're slightly retarded. Some people would say we have the best lives ever. 
I'll let you figure that out once you get on the line. It is fun though, y'all. Just the first year reserve. That's not fun. Somebody said, Julian Gutierrez said, I hope you, you all earn seniority soon. I hope so too. I'm just going to throw out a little secret out there, y'all. I'm trying to apply for our first class service, which would give me a line sooner than just sitting on reserve as a regular, like, core flight attendant. So, fingers crossed, I just applied yesterday. And if I get that, I would start hopefully, like, January, February, March. Your house said, your brother is adorable and it's nice and the two of you are so close. I showed my brother that comment and he blushed and said thank you. <laughs> I told him he had fans on YouTube. <laughs> he, he doesn't like it, y'all. He's not me. He, he don't like it at all. I'm probably slaughtering your name. I'm sorry, but Itamar asked, should I have a picture on my resume or is that unnecessary? Um, I think it's unnecessary. The airlines that want pictures specifically ask for them during their application process. So I don't really think you need to have it on your resume. There's a girl in our class that did. Maybe she was convinced that's how she got the job. Myra? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. That was, I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. I don't believe they y'all. So <laughs> don't put your picture on your resume. Actually, probably soldering your name again. I'm so sorry. But Itamar has... A lot of questions do airlines just hire once a year yes and no depending on the needs of the airline so like some of the bigger airlines like Delta really opens their application only once a year and it's usually in September um, United I think kind of does it maybe twice a year just depending on their hiring needs my specific company, we open hours like three or four times a year. Regionals, like Sky West, they're hiring all year round all the time. So it just depends on who you're applying to. I really hate that I can't pronounce all these names correctly like I want to because people call me Alexis all the time and it ticks me off because my name is Alexia. Or they call me Alexa without the I and my name is Alexia. Um, Tanarvis? I think that's your name. <laughs> Sorry again, but um, he says, make sure y'all subscribe to this beautiful and smart young lady. And I agree. Make sure you subscribe. How long will I be on reserve? Until the devil lets me loose. <laughs> oh, gosh. No, that's just a joke, y'all. I honestly don't know. Like, when we started... They said um, JFK and Boston, which are our two most junior bases. JFK, which is our busiest base. They said we would be on reserve anywhere from six to eight months. But after my graduation class, there was only one other graduating class that was like half the size of mine. And we haven't had any other people graduate into the in-flight yet. And it's I graduated July 25th. And it's currently October 3rd, so my seniority can't go up until we get more flight attendants under us, which means I sit on reserve until more flight attendants come in that can sit on reserve, if that makes sense. So I'm hoping for, we're going to pick up hiring again, obviously very soon because the application process is open. I know we're slated to have, I think, one graduating class by the end of this year, right? Is it one or is it two? 12-8. <laughs> it's one. They graduate 12-8. Seniority stalker over here. <laughs> so we have one class graduating at the end of the year, um, which still won't give me enough seniority to get off reserve. So I'm hoping maybe about another three or four classes after that and that and if they go back to doing two classes a month, then that would be awesome because they've just been doing one class since I think they started just one class a month in April or May or something. So that kind of slowed down since you're already rolling out too. But hopefully when January rolls back around and they start the classes up for this current application window, 
So, okay, just to answer the question, how long will I be on reserve? Probably about a year is what I put in my head. People that graduated in two, like the end of 2016 are just not getting lines. No, here. March. March what? March this year. They getting lines? Uh-huh. That girl that I talked to the other day said she graduated like December 2016. I wonder, but, you know, I think it really has a lot to do with the, the way, way they're people better. did it. Yeah, that is true. The girl got graduated in March. And that's another thing, y'all, which I'm going to say, but I can't go into detail because I don't even understand it myself. Okay. But the way that you bid, and bidding is your schedule and what you're willing to work and what you're not willing to work and how you want your day set up and blah, blah, blah. If you bid really well to where the system says, oh, I can give this person a line, it might just give you a line and you could only be here. You know, I know a girl, I ain't going to tell you her name because people might go stalk her down and beat her up because <laughs> she's only the class before me. So she's been here what, four months, four months, and she got a line her third month, y'all. So she bid really well and the way from her bidding really well it gave her a line a line meaning which this is what aligned me so when you're on reserve like I was telling you your schedule when you get your schedule it just says reserve and then when the week starts it tells you if you're short call reserve or airport standby and then it tells you the times if you have a line which means you actually have a real schedule you know where you're going beforehand how many days the trips are how many legs you're going to be working who you're going to be working with etc 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 so that gives you the ability to kind of plan out your trip and your day much easier you know what to meal prep and how much food to bring and what clothes you should bring and what you don't need to bring unlike me i always have to pack my suitcase for four days and put spring summer winter fall all of it in one suitcase because i don't know where i end up and then i never really even pack lunch because i just get so frustrated with lunch. what's the youngest you can be to apply at your airline you have to be 20 at the date of application, I believe. Do I only work out of JFK? I've answered this in another video, um, twice actually, but I'll just go ahead and answer it again. Do I only work out of JFK? I am JFK based, and when you're JFK based, you can be assigned to report to, um, I call it Happy Plains, New York, only because of the uh, airport code HPN, but it's White Plains, um, EWR, which is New Jersey, JFK and uh, LaGuardia, which is right down the street. My baby knows her airline code. I do. I'm growing up, y'all. That first test, the training day one, or day, whatever day we took that first test. I didn't know my airport hub, y'all. I was just like, Lord, let the percentages be in my favor. <laughs> Hunger Games. <laughs> and they were. Hallelujah. That would have been horrible to fail that test on some freaking airport codes that we had for two months ahead of time. When Ryan King used to talk to our class, he told us that he usually gauge like how well the class is going to do because people do fail the airport, fail the airport first. It's crazy. Shut up. Yeah, that's what he told us. He said, like, a lot of everybody passed because this usually determines how well the class is going to do the rest of the time of year. Wow. Say bye to Fawn. Bye, Fawn. <laughs> okay, y'all. One of the questions that I get asked the most, which this wasn't on one of the, the YouTube questions, but um, people ask me this in person a lot, and my mother asks me this question every time I come home too. How do I get so many days off in a row? How does your reserve work? So I'm going to just explain, try to explain the scheduling a little bit. So at my airline, we're on 18 days we work 18 days we're scheduled 18 reserve days a month and then we have 12 off days a month what we do is we bid for the month between the first and the eighth of the month we can bid for our schedule for the next month so today is the third so literally just yesterday I bid for my schedule for November so I go in and I tell the scheduling system how I would like for them to schedule my reserve blocks if I want to work six day reserve blocks, four day reserve blocks, if I want two or three days off in between my blocks or if I just want to do one day off in between my block. Um, 
things like that. I kind of bid here and there. I don't really because simply because I'm so junior that any requests that I kind of put in, I probably won't get, you know. And if I don't really have anything serious going on for the month, then I don't really have anything to bid for. Now, I will bid for my off days, like for November and December. I definitely bid for my off days because I just want to have those off from the jump and hopefully I you know I get awarded those off days because if not I might not be able to change my schedule around simply because November and December are um, busy months you know high time flying and um, I don't even know how to explain this but high time flying to the point where the way that I am currently able to swap my days and push all my days together, I might not be able to do that in November and December. So let me kind of try to break this down for y'all. As far as what our scheduling manual says, our schedule just can't have just one day of reserve and then we have a day off. I believe it has to be a minimum of two days put together and a maximum of six days put together. So what I had been doing was doing six day blocks I would have six days of reserve meaning I could be called to go to work and then I would take one day off and then I would do another six days and take one day off and then I would do another six days and then that would leave all the rest of my other ten days off for me to go and do whatever I want so that's how I was doing my schedule the first three months the whole time that I've been here pretty much um, but for November and December, I kind of changed that around because, um, obviously, you know, during holiday season, Thanksgiving, Christmas, flying is going to be crazy. Commuting is probably going to be hard. Um, so what I did was, and then I have specific things kind of going on in November where I want to be here and I want to be there for it. So I actually went in and bidded for specific days off this time where I won't really change my schedule around. I um, mean, we're also able to change our off days or swap days with, with ourselves or swap days with other people. So if I had certain off days that on my schedule that I wanted to move to reserve days and, or switch, diff just basically switch days around, I could do that as long as there's a reserve grid on our scheduling thing that says okay this day we need this many people on reserve and currently we have this many so if it's if we have more than enough then um i can you know i can swap the days if there's not enough people sitting on reserve that day and i'm trying to give up that day it won't let me you know, so it's really hard to go into detail about this without showing you because it can be really confusing. And I simply just don't want to go into detail about it too much because airlines work differently. It's kind of all the same idea. But everybody's system is different and how you get days off and what their schedulings are are just completely different from every airline. But I just kind of wanted to give the best answer to that question that I can because I get it a lot. But the really good thing about being on reserve is that truly your schedule is very flexible, especially here at this airline. Like, I have literally been able to go to everything and anything on my off days that I've wanted to or switch days around to be able to make it to go back home. Like, this past weekend I went home for three days because we threw my uncle a surprise birthday party. I originally didn't have those days off and I was able to swap them to where I did go home. So that's the one up and upside about being on reserve. I'm not really sure how that works when I have a line or get a schedule um, because you're already paid, you're already scheduled actual trips and flying time. So I know you can still swap trips and things like that, but I just don't I don't really know all the details of how exactly that works yet. Um, but yeah, I think that's gonna be the last question. I'm kind of winded. I need to cook me some chicken alfredo and go to bed. So. <laughs> all right y'all so that is the end of this video make sure you subscribe like comment and share this video with anyone that you know is interested in becoming a flight attendant um, if you have any other questions that you need answers to feel free to comment down below email me or send me a message via instagram talk to y'all later bye